Hello YouTube, my name is Nero and welcome back to The Simpsons Hit and Run. Here we are with episode 2 of the playthrough. Now if you're wondering what was going on here, I was messing around here at the house, seeing if I could get on top of The Simpsons house here. Turns out not so much, there's actually a barrier all around pretty much every house around here, which is a bit disappointing. I was really hoping to be able to get on top of the roof. Maybe there's a way, I have not done any research on YouTube or anything like that, but I assume there's probably a way. It's just a matter of actually going ahead and figuring it out. But once again guys, welcome back to the Simpsons Hit and Run playthrough. If you're wondering why we're here at the house, <laughs> so with the last episode I did save and exit back there at the power plant, and when you load back in, it just throws you here at like a checkpoint. So the objective was to of course head back to our house. It loaded me back up here at my house. So that's where we are. Let's go inside. I believe there's going to be a cutscene, and once we're done with that cutscene, we'll be able to fully get the episode underway. The famous bearded cartoon creator incarcerated in a Peruvian jail. In other news, local citizens are outraged over the discovery of surveillance cameras throughout the town. We go now to City Hall, where Mayor Quimby is fielding questions from an angry mob. These miniature cameras are an outrage. Spying on our women's dressing rooms, bathrooms, and locker rooms is unforgivable. I think I speak for all Springfielders when I say, where is the sexy footage? In other unexplained news, strange black vans have been appearing all over town. Marge, that black van is spying on us. Oh, homie, you're so sexy when you're paranoid. Where is the sexy footage? I think Mayor Quimby is a very underrated character in The Simpsons. I was watching, actually, I apologize for no uh, episode yesterday. I ended up watching a lot of The Simpsons last night. And I found out just about this, like, last night. I mean, other people have probably already known about it. No, don't start already! I want to get a different vehicle. I don't want to drive the Plow King. This thing's slow. We need to follow this uh, mysterious black van out here. But there's a website... It may be the official ones, like SimpsonsWorld.com or something like that. And then you can, like, basically via Fox Now, you can watch, like, just constant episodes of The Simpsons online. It's fantastic. Now, there are ads on there. And I believe, let's do a shortcut here. I believe you can, I think you can do it just period, but I'd, like, use my provider. Like, it's like, who is your cable provider? And I'm like, oh, here, here they are. And then they're like, all right, well, you can choose to either watch like two minutes worth of ads like per episode, or you can watch this one 30 second interactive ad or something like that. And then if you do all that, then you're fine. You're good to go. I'm smashing into everything here. Um, oh no, I don't want to hit and run. No, no, I don't want to hit and run. Slow down. All right. I did not want to get a hit and run. Hit and runs are annoying because the cops start chasing you. And I don't remember if you can actually get away from them. I know if they hit you, uh, they take money from you, but... Yeah, so I did that. It was actually pretty cool. Lots of episodes of The Simpsons Online. You can kind of just watch for free uh, via ads. And it's not like you have to bootleg them or pirate them or anything like that. So I was a big fan. And in the first episode of this series, I asked you guys, what are some of your favorite episodes of all time? And I got some very interesting responses. Uh, Last Six at the Springfield was pretty good. Um, somebody said specifically that Season 4, just as a whole, was like his favorite uh, group of Simpsons episodes, which honestly, season four was fantastic. As somebody who was like, went back and like watched season four recently, because I have like most of the episodes on DVD, um, season four is absolutely incredible. The Stonecutters episode, uh, was someone's favorite, which I liked. One that really, uh, burned into my memory. Somebody said the episode where Maud Flanders dies, and speaking of the Stonecutters episode, here we are. Uh, the episode where Maud Flanders died. Oh, there's a card up there, actually. I'm, I didn't actually know that. Now, I need to do some research, but I'm fairly positive. Uh, if we get all the collector's cards, do we get a special car? Because if you look at all the... We're almost to the end here, so there's about to be a cutscene. Oh, Mr. Burns is behind all this. Evil spying is so like him, that wrinkled old monkey skeleton. That wrinkled old monkey skeleton. <laughs> so, mission complete. I think, yeah, there's, um, there's a phone booth all the way over here. We need to go to the grocery store. But, there, hey, there's actually... The Krusty's hanging out here. I never knew Krusty was hanging out here. Hold on a second. We need to go over here, then we're going to talk to Krusty. Now, I do love the fact that the uh, Stonecutter's HQ is just right there. But um, if you look here at the phone, right, you have your Plow King and your Sedan, which we already have those. Um, the pickup truck you can get by doing a mission with Cletus. Uh, and then you buy the surveillance van and the duff truck from Old Gill. The only one I don't know how to get is the Electorus. And I'm wondering, I'd have to look this up, and I'll probably do it in the next episode. 
do we need to get all the collector's cards to get the Electorus? Because I don't know where you get this thing, honestly. I mean, that makes sense in my head. Maybe the collectibles have nothing to do with it, but I've never actually collected all the collectibles on the first mission here. And so maybe that's how you do it. Uh, for those that don't know, the Simpsons hit and run is broken up into seven big chapters. Homer and us playing as him, this is like the first chapter. It's more or less a tutorial, as I've said. Most of these things are pretty basic. And it's going to get more difficult as the game goes on. But uh, that's how it goes. In each, in each one of these different chapters, you have different things that you can unlock, vehicles and stuff like that. And I'm not, I don't remember. I think you can, but I think you can go back and like do stuff after the fact. But I would like to get it as I go, you know. Let's talk to Krusty. Oh, we can't even talk to Krusty? There's no, there's no speaking prompt for Krusty? Fun fact, uh, I, I probably have this slightly wrong, but it's more or less right. Um, when they were first playing together, The Simpsons, uh, they considered having Krusty be like Homer's like alter ego or something he would do on the side, which is why Homer and Krusty look so freaking similar. But they end up changing it. I forget the exact story behind that, but that's pretty close to true. And right here, <laughs> I would absolutely love to um, go ahead and play this really quick. I've been advised by my security to stay indoors. I am uh, busy improving our town. I can't come to the door. I'm spending an evening with the uh, uh, wife. <laughs> that was what I was hoping for. So I told my brother I was playing through this game again. And he had recently played through it, like, I don't know, six months ago or something like that. And uh, <laughs> he specifically brought up that one reference there. I'm just spending an evening with the uh, wife. And here is the house. This is the house of, I, oh, I, can't, get a, I can't get a proper camera angle, so we're just going to get out here. This is the house of the original Krieger of Itchy and Scratchy, who was homeless, but then got some money. And he made an, or got an all-gold house and a rocket car. And if you think for one second, ladies and gentlemen, that we are not going to go to the grocery store without this rocket car, you are crazy. You are absolutely crazy. So like I say, um, every vehicle in this game has like its own uh, like speed, acceleration, handling, and so on. The speed and the acceleration on the rocket car is absolutely freaking insane. Oh, there's a big jump here. Hold on, I wanna get a lot of speed for this. I wanna get a ton of speed for this jump right here. The rocket car, as you may imagine, goes incredibly quickly, but it also blows up incredibly quickly. So let's see if we can go all the way up here. Back it up. All right. I'm gonna hit that tree, but that's gonna be okay. All right, so this is gonna be a good way to get a little bit of speed. Here we go, here we go. And we're going into the school. We're going into the school. All right. Well, that was maybe a bad jump to go ahead and do because it didn't really have a whole lot of room to work with after you uh, after you land. And as you guys can see, the car's already pretty much about to blow up, but that's okay because we're here at the grocery store. And we're gonna hit this. We're not going to hit the sauce, like Homer said. We're going to go ahead and hit that, though. Oh, All right, let's go ahead and talk to Marge. Mr. Burns is spying on everybody. We've got to follow him. Not now, Homer. A new violent video game has hit the streets. And we need to get rid of it before it warps any children with its bloops and bleeps. But that game sounds awesome. And therefore should be destroyed. I guess. And therefore should be destroyed. Oh, Simpsons, so ahead of the time. I guess even back then, people were like, violent video games, ah, corrupting our youth. And uh, so to combat these violent video games, we are going to attack this truck here and knock <laughs> game sensible shoe to the metal. Um, we're going to be knocking this truck here, taking uh, boxes off the back of it and stealing them because morality, right? <laughs> Did you guys notice Jasper is actually the guy driving the truck that we're trying to take out? I can't, I can't quite see him right now because we're like, we're... All right, I need to back up here. But yeah, old, old Jasper, uh, Grandpa's friend, is the guy driving this. Guess he got uh, some side work in his old age. If you look at the Bone Storm logo on the side of the truck itself, it is absolutely, positively... To call that low res is a, uh, <laughs> is a bit of an understatement, honestly. And bam! Now I wish I had insurance. Now I wish I had insurance. You never notice how with the family sedan, I'm trying my darndest to get this freaking thing. With the family sedan and with the canyon arrow here, they specifically go out of their way to either remove the roof of the vehicle or to um <clears throat> pardon me. Or to make it so like on the canyon arrow here you can't see the roof. Like, wonder why they do that. It's like they want you to, like, they're going out of their way to make sure you can see your character 
while you're driving around. I don't quite understand that decision. There we go. Drop one out. We have a minute 30 to get two more. So I think we're going to be okay. There's one. I was going to keep riding the back of him. Will one fall out if I just do this? No. Come on. One should fall out now, surely. There we go. You bumped into a tree. Come on. How well packed are these things? Hold on. You're going to the wall, buddy. <laughs> All right. There we go. And there's 10 out of 10. Drive to the Simpsons' house. So, yeah. So, to uh, for morality's sake, because we didn't want, you know, those kids playing violent video games. If only kids would play more video games about sharing. Bart, you know I abhor crazy plans. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go spy on my boss. <laughs> we do need to go spy on Mr. Burns. But, so, to go ahead and make it so people don't play these violent video games, which may corrupt their morals, we're going to go steal a bunch of these video games and drive old Jasper off the road a bunch of times. <laughs> Makes no sense. So, we need to go to the power plant, I think it said. I mean, that's what the option at the top left says, but I didn't catch exactly what it said, like, in terms of story. There are a couple of things I would like to do in this episode before... We really get too far on. Let's just, um, I guess I have two vehicles. Let's grab the family sedan. Let's go grab the other vehicles. One of them is going to be Cleese's truck. And then the other two, like I said, are going to be like the surveillance van and the, uh, the Duff truck, which I don't really particularly like any of those vehicles, but for like a completionist sake, I would like to have them because if you guys don't know, like, uh, on the dolphin emulator here, Instead of, like, having, like, uh, a memory card like you would for some of the older systems, like, it just saves on Dolphin. Like, you, it saves your computer, right? And so, as we're doing this and I'm smashing into everything. As we play through the entirety of this game, um, once I beat it, I would like to have most of the things unlocked. And so, at any time, I can just go back and play. So, you come over here to Old Gil. I hope I have enough. Yeah, more than enough currency, I think, for this. You go talk to Old Gil here. That wolf is at old Gil's door and check out the uh, stats here. It looks like the duff truck is just like an objectively worse um, Plow King it's got toughness, but like no speed no acceleration no handling and then the surveillance van is okay um, One half speed one half acceleration three handling almost four toughness We're gonna go ahead and purchase both of them because you know, whatever um, yeah, Now nah, you're gonna buy a car I like Old Gil. He was a good character. I recently learned that the guy that played, um, what was his name? The lawyer. And then there's Troy McClure. And then you have the lawyer. Who was, the, what was the lawyer's name? Not Miguel's. Lionel Hutz. Lionel Hutz. Right. The guy that played Lionel Hutz as well as Troy McClure. His name was Phil Hartman. Ended up getting murdered by his wife. And both those characters got retired, uh, out of respect for Phil. So check, check this out, by the way. Family sedan, right? One speed. Four handling. Lectoris, two speed, four handling. Then you go to acceleration, one and a half, and then two and a half, one and a half two, for acceleration, two and a half for toughness. You go over here, one half for acceleration, one and a half for toughness. So basically, the Lectoris is a faster version of the uh, family sedan that has the same handling but is slightly less tough. Right, and that just sounds like an objectively better car, but I don't think I've ever actually unlocked it, so I'd love to do that. Then Cleese's truck we need to grab just by doing this mission over here. Um, we'll take the family sedan here, because in terms of like handling and stuff like that, it's my favorite car. But yeah, Phil Hartman, the guy who played both of those characters, um, was apparently a pretty famous guy. I didn't know too much about him, because, you know, it, I was young at, at about the time this happened. Let's grab this uh, Buzz Cola box here. Actually, let's explore uh, the backyard here, if we can. Oh, okay. So we can't explore the backyard, please, this Jack. He um was murdered by his wife. He got into an argument with his wife, told her she needs to quit doing drugs or something like that, and then like went into the room and he went to bed and um she came in there and shot him. Uh called up her friend saying, I shot him, I shot him, oh gosh, then the friends came over. And then she apparently like they called the cops and then she killed herself while the cops were coming or something like that. Like a homicide suicide sort of a thing. And that's what happened to the voice actor of Lionel Hutz and um Troy McClure, which is why you don't see those characters anymore in speaking roles. You occasionally see them in the background uh, of newer episodes, but you'll never hear them speak because they retired to speaking things. Instead of replacing them out of respect for uh, Phil, I think his name was, um, they decided to retire him. Just learned about that last night. That was uh, pretty interesting. So let's talk to Cleus here. Hey, I know you. You're in my dumb guy support group. 
Mind if I borrow your truck for a while? No can do, Mr. Fancy Blue Pants. I be gotten to finish up my daily chores, or else Brandine ain't making her muskrat pie tonight. <laughs> Fine, I'll help you with your hillbilly chores. You help me bring in this season's harvest, and I'll take you anywhere you be needing to go. Woohoo! First most, I want you to go to the gas station, get me some of those cardboard tubes, you know them? I'm gonna bail me some indoor plumbing. When you finish with that, Knock down all them tobacco plants so the youngins can clean them up for market. <laughs> all right, this old shanty. By the way, this freaking mission is not easy. So find cardboard tubes and collect the tobacco harvest for Aclius in under okay, two minutes and 30 thing. seconds. So get inside your car here. The timer starts. You need to go grab all five of these and then go all the way back around to the tobacco plant area. Grab all the tobacco plants, knock them down, then get back to uh, Cleus's in 2 minutes and 30 seconds. Sorry, Barney. I apologize. Barney, I, I've always had kind of a soft spot for Barney as a character. I like him. He's kind of a tragic character. He's also a little bit of uh, comic relief as well. And uh, he was fun to play in The Simpsons Wrestling. I would love to play The Simpsons Wrestling. I wonder if I can somehow rig that up to be emulated on the PC here and uh, just play through it. Because The Simpsons Wrestling was another game I played a lot growing up. All right, so we need to turn around here. To the tobacco field, which, if you guys remember correctly, is um, right in front of the power plant. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, Homer yelling, I am evil Homer. I did adjust um, some of the audio uh, settings and stuff like that between the first and second episode. Um, to, actually, the first episode had a lot more editing in it than you would imagine. Mostly audio, like... Um, Turning down the sounds of the vehicles while we're inside the car versus uh, turning up voices, especially during cutscenes and stuff like that, or, you know, lots of little audio things. There's a card back there on top of the, um, on top of that trailer back there. So I know of that one. I know of the one inside the Stonecutters Hall. Is there a way to check? No, not while, not while we're in a mission. I wonder how many of those uh, cards I still need to grab. Because it can't be too many. All right, so we have one man to do this. All right, we got one. To take it slow. I mean, you, you kind of have to go slow through this field. Like, you cannot go fast. It just doesn't work that way. Come on. Come on. And one more. Take it easy. There we go. Uh-oh, we're about to get a hit and run. So I'm not going to go through there because I don't want to get a hit and run. A hit and run will cause the cops to chase me. I'm not a fan of that. All right, let's see if we can hit this. I think I have the speed. Oh, I got hit and run because of that? And then the cops stop. No, 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 don't come after me. All right, so the cops are chasing me. I guess once the bar on the bottom right goes away, um, we're good. Can I not turn the mission during a hit and run? How's that work? All right. Woo! All right, so we avoided our first hit and run. The cop died, I assume. And we completed the mission. There we go. Uh, it's Octically is here. Okay, city boy, I'll help you. You just yell into one of those magic talk boxes, and I come a running. Oh man, them things is crazy. <laughs> the magic talk boxes. Congratulations, you've unlocked Lisa's pickup truck. Go to a phone booth to use it. All right, let's go check that out, and then I think we're end off the episode. Drive to the power plant is what they want us to do next for the main story, which um we can do that. We'll do that in the next episode though, because I want to check out Lisa's truck here. And then um, we'll do a little bit of research uh, regarding the Electorus and see how we can possibly get that. Because I, I don't think I've ever got it before. My mother slash sister told me I should do a good deed today, so whatever. <laughs> He's like, my mother slash sister told me I need to do a good deed today. So it's kind of cool about Cleus' truck. Instead of, uh, you know, you just having Cleus' truck, Cleus comes and drives for you. You control it. But, uh, you know, Cleus' truck is there for you. How do I get on top of this? Okay. There's gonna be a bee up here. Want to get fresh. Want to get fresh. And there's our Mr. Sparkle box. Is there a way to check level progress? Um, wasp camera. Lots of wasp cameras. We're only like half done with this thing. If we want to do everything, we're only one story mission away from being done, though. We have four of the seven collector's cards. I know where at least one more of them are. Huh. I wonder if you need them for the Electorus. I imagine they would. That'd be a cool mechanic to like. Have you explore the entirety of that uh, map that you're playing to get a special car? And that car, I mean, is pretty freaking good. The Electorus is, in my opinion, a better version yeah, of the family sedan. 
So, I don't know. Either way, I hope you guys all enjoyed this episode of The Simpsons Hit and Run playthrough. And I, <laughs> just out of sheer habit, I wanted to, like, I hope you guys all enjoyed this episode of the Fallout 4 playthrough. Because, God, we played so much freaking Fallout 4. But, um, yeah, I'm excited to be playing this game again. This car handles, it handles okay. Not amazingly, but it handles okay. But I'm really enjoying the playthrough. I'm enjoying reading your guys' comments. I try my best, and I'll end the video off with this. I try my best to not record these episodes in bulk, which is why there actually was not an episode yesterday. It's because I tried to record them sort of, I would not make it, sort of like, I don't know, almost every day, because that way I would like to incorporate your guys' feedback and your comments and stuff like that in my playthroughs. I think you see some other Let's Players, especially the ones that do face cam, and, you know, they'll record a week's worth of videos, or at least of that series, in one day. And you can tell because in their face cam of all seven videos that week, they're wearing the same shirt and have their hair the same way. And, uh, you know, so, you know, when you're watching a playthrough like that, you're like, none of your comments matter. None of your feedback is being taken into consideration. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, you're just there watching, which I'm not saying it's a bad thing necessarily. But when I do my playthroughs, I do like to incorporate you guys as much as possible. Your thoughts, your feelings, your feedback and stuff like that. Stories even, like talking about the favorite episodes and such. So, um, occasionally I'll record two or three episodes in a day. Uh, more often than not, I'll try and record one episode a day. We're going to have to see. But, ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys so much for the amazing reception you gave me on the first, and hopefully, uh, the first episode, as well as hopefully this episode as well. Because I am very excited to play through this game once again, and I'm so happy to see so many, one, Simpsons fans, but two, people just excited for this series in general. So thank you guys so much. I hope you enjoyed this video. Drop me a rating, and I hope you guys all have a wonderful day.